Hello, everybody. It's been a while since I've recorded anything because uh, we got sick with COVID over Thanksgiving, and we didn't get one of those cool, hip versions of COVID that's mild. We got one of the old school, clunky kind that leaves you knocked out for a bit. Um, this is about day 15, I think. Uh, doing better in some ways, um, but it also kind of spun out into these bad sinus infections and stuff. So, I don't mean to get into weird medical crap, but, you know, just let me know why I'm going to sound extra weird and um, slow, slow thinking, especially that the, the brain fog is a big part of that. And I'm definitely feeling it. I'm operating on full stupid filters today, so um, bear with. <laughs> um, this is a signing plate that we're doing with the amazing comic book store OK Comics um, in the UK and uh, you can order through them and you'll get this this plate here which I believe will be signed I'll have links below when they're ready and um, I don't know what else to say other than I'm gonna get into what I've got here and what my process is um, so it began with a sketch, which I don't really have here anymore, but basically there was a, a loose sketch of these figures. Then I made other layers and just tightened it up until I got it to look like what you see here. Um, I'm not sure about their signatures on their jackets and stuff. I have to I have some reference to look at for that. I don't know what military symbols mean and stuff, so it's just all guesswork, you know. This radar symbol in the background, I grabbed off of uh, just online somewhere of a radar um, pattern, um, clip art or something. I'm not going to use that. That's really just to help uh, get the idea across to... Um, the team of what the sketch would look like. So I have to rebuild it because um, clip art is owned by other people or whatever this photo thing was, you know. Uh, again, sorry, my, my cloudy head uh, is not making communication to be pretty clear. But anyway, you have to rebuild it. So um, the radar signature here that I, that I took offline was just to give the idea, which is that there's a radar symbol with an alien head showing up in the radar ping. Um, above that will be our credits, and um, we've got this blue book signature at the bottom. I'm not sure if we'll use it or not. I just wanted to place it there so that I could see the space for it. Um, so from here, I think I'm going to just start first by building this radar piece, so a new layer. <clears throat> I'm going to make grab this circle up here, make sure I'm keeping the aspect. Um, so that it's a, it's a complete circle. If I shut aspect type off, I can then kind of play around with it if I wanted to. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Don't worry, the screen is clean. <laughs> um, okay, so aspect ratio. And what, what I do to create the circles is I imagine a square box around the circle that I'm going to create. So um, if in my mind I reach this, to that right here, this is where the square box would be. That's where I begin the circle. And if you begin the circle, circle around this imagined square box, you can line up your eyeball, your circle template pretty good. Um, so now I'm going to simply outline this section. Keep the lines. <coughs> this outer line should be probably thicker, so let's try 11, see what that looks like. And I got the wrong color. Let's try this again. Uh, I'm going to go full thicker on the outline. All right, 22. That looks good. Um, now I'm going to do this same thing again with, again, I've got the, um, so the circle here, which I'm going to eyeball about where this imaginary block is. 
and it gets me pretty close to where the center of this is. I know there are better ways to do this. There are, I'm sure there's tools in here to make these circle templates line up perfectly. Um, if you know what they are, let me know in the notes below. <laughs> Line. Much thinner line for these these inner lines. Another way I can do this is just duplicate the layer. Then I can just size it down. Whoops. That wrong. Okay, I should actually just grab. Just this inside circle. <clears throat> edit, copy, edit, paste. Of course, there's shortcuts for that. Um, I also have a weird habit of just using my one hand and not using my other hand on my keyboard for shortcuts. I don't know why. It's just some sort of weird, lazy thing that I have, um, which makes the work more because instead of using shortcuts on my keyboard with my free hand, I'm going up here. <clears throat> And grabbing the commands, I, it, I don't know why I did that. I am a silly boy. Oops, what did I do? Okay, I'm going to duplicate that. And again, bring it down here. So there's different ways to do this. I know there's just got to be smarter, better ways. I'm going to flatten all of these. That time I did use a keyboard shortcut for some random reason. Um, now I've got to create these sort of section grids going through the keyboard or through the radar. So I'm going to use the straight line here. And it looks like the, key, the, the these radar boards are split with a thicker line going this way and a thicker line going that way. I don't know how accurate that is, but that's the model that I that I grabbed. Um, so I'm going to use that as a sort of guideline for how this will look. For no other reason than it's um, just guessing. And I mean, I guess there should be like a thicker circle here, right in the center. <clears throat> All right. So we have our radar just now. I'm going to label it. I'm going to lock it. That way I don't accidentally draw on that layer. <clears throat> um, I guess I'll work on the... Actually, I'm going to, say, I'm going to save the guys for last. So let's work on the, the alien figure next. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to... Draw this in a slightly different color, just a darker blue. It's just going to make it a little easier for me to see. Um, I got my stabilization up relatively high. Um, largely right now, it's just because I'm just not 100%. You know, the way I'm feeling. I feel. <clears throat> I'm just a little dizzy. The sinus infections on top of the COVID stuff has been just hard. I'll go for a really stylized eye here. There we go. And I want to keep this eye. Um, symmetrical, so I'm going to duplicate the layer. And 
transform, flip it over horizontal. And this way it's completely symmetrical. Even where the eye right here, you can see it's taking up the same amount of space and making the same little patterns here as it is here. Control E. Now I gotta figure out the actual the sort of swooping effect here. I'm gonna try grabbing some zipatone and seeing how this will look. <coughs> Pardon me. So what I'm doing right now is I'm looking to my backup files. Uh, I have a whole file full of like zipatone patterns or bende dots, uh, depends on what you want to call them. There's a bunch of different names for it. Okay, so I've got this whole big file of layers. Um, see where I scanned my cat once? Um, these are all different textures that I use and, and I can put into backgrounds. Um, usually what I end up doing is lowering the opacity super, super low. Um, so you can barely see them. Um, there's everything from stuff that I just grabbed online. There's a bunch of watercolor patterns I made myself. Um, uh, lots of little tools and stuff. So um, I got a bunch of my patterns that you see that I've used through tons of stuff. Um, all of which I have to sort of manipulate as I'm working through them. Here's the zip tone. And this is what I'm thinking will work here. I don't know if it's going to work or not. <clears throat> I think one of these four might work. Actually, I'm not sure that any of them will work. Um, but Maybe this. So let's try this. Control A. Copy. <clears throat> Lower the opacity so I can look at it. Alright, so I just I don't know if this is gonna work at all or not. My brain is just not working. <laughs> um, okay. Delete on the outside of that. So what I'm thinking I could do is like here would be the radar arm as you'd call it, you know, that's going around and leaving this trail behind. Um, and then You know, it's, it's gray into this area. Just not sure. I don't know. Let me shut this off. I think it works. I think it kind of works. Okay, so let's do this. Let's where'd my radar go? Okay. So choose the area outside of the radar. Here and just delete it. Oh man, I don't know. 
So I can change the tone of it like this. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Do you know I'll have to get rid of all that? All that here. Let's delete that. It'll be easier to tell once I draw these guys in. So what I'll end up doing, if this doesn't really work for me, then um, I'll just kind of hand draw it. Old school. The zip -a -tone's fun, but there's, there's something about just hand drawing, quote, effects, that is very pleasing. If you look at uh, Bruce Tim, Darwin Cook's work, you know they don't really use it a tone very much. Darwin would use it for some experimental mm -hmm. stories and stuff, but generally, you know, if he did like a lens flare or something, it would be just just brushwork. You know, if he did a blur effect, it would just be brushwork. You know, um, and there's no wrong approach to it. It's just different feelings that that these things um, create. Uh, there's an artificiality to <clears throat> something like the zip -a tone that works, but it's not the only thing that works, you know. Uh, I don't know if I'm making sense, like I said, just not feeling it at all. <laughs> um, I also need to find... I hope I didn't mess up the recording here, did I? I don't know what happened there. Okay. This is from Taki's book. I'm going to go into my download section to grab some reference. These are some military outfits from the 70s or something like that. This is the reference that I'm using for, you know, these guys here. I don't know what their military ranks are or anything. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll paste them like right onto the things that I'm working on. Just keep them a little teeny tiny, and then I can see them next to me. I, actually, I mean, I have a whole secondary screen over here. I should pull them up too, but I'm actually feeling so icky right now. Um, that looking back and forth between two screens makes me feel ill. <laughs> so it's a little easier to just put them on like this. And also, all I'm really doing is trying to capture the essence. What is the impression of a military officer? What is the impression of an Air Force officer? Not a literal Air Force officer. Does that make sense? <clears throat> okay, so above the radar here, I'm going to just start inking these guys. And again, this is all just like freehand and just did it through several layers until it started to come together. Like his arm is supposed to be kind of folded in front of him. Kind of works, kind of doesn't. I don't know. I don't mind. I'll keep them black. All right. All right. So I'm going to start here with just the bill of the. This hat here. Keep just a little tiny bit more detail than I had cleaning up stuff like you see how the the bill of his of his cap I made it a little more so that the form fits better than my sketch and every time I do sort of a layer pass whether I'm doing it with pencils and then going with a darker pencil and then with a pen or layers in photo Photoshop or, or clip studio in this case 
each layer, each pass is meant to improve on it some. So that way I can be loose and sloppy and, and make mistakes because I know the next pass will, will tighten it up. Like his hands here. You know, see this like wonky finger and stuff? Like There you go. And that's not great either. I'm going to redo that. <laughs> that's really bad, actually. <coughs> and again, I'm just feeling so, so not 100. Go in here, give him a big Air Force strongman chin. Yeah, there's a, I think I've talked about this before, like brushes um, in uh, Photoshop and Clip Studio. It's interesting. I, I used to not like inking in Clip Studio because I can't get a, a brush as refined as the kinds of brushes that I'm using in Uh, there's a shape to the arm here. Like I, I was having it kind of coming straight down and in, but but this kind of bowing out feels a little bit better. But anyway, what I was saying about the brushes is I used to not like inking in this in Clip Studio on my PC because uh, whether it's the Cintiq that's older or the size of my computer or or something, it um, the brushwork was never as fine as I could get it on my um, iPad. Um, I'm going to need to grab that reference again. So yeah, my, uh, as my <coughs> it was never as refined as, as my iPad, but yet there's something about like a slightly duller tip that I can't seem to, to emulate in um, in Clip Studio on my iPad. Uh, that is, it feels a little more natural here, and I don't know why. So now I do find that depending on the product project, I oh man. I'm, my brain is so not working right now. All right, I'm going to leave the symbol off for now. I'm going to come back to it because I can't think, can't think straight. Um, but basically, what I was saying was, yeah, I used to hate inking this in Clip Studio on my PC because I could never get the brushwork to be as refined as they are on my little iPad Pro. But I've also found there's certain pro products, projects that I'm working on that it works better with this slightly duller line than a really sharp line like I can get on the iPad. And I use different brushes and I've experimented but for whatever reason. Um, to get a duller line on my iPad, I'm using brushes that are just too dull. Um, I just can't seem to find a good balance between the effects that the brushes make. Probably somebody who's much more savvy with the brushes can handle that, but, but I'm just having trouble. Just like I'm having trouble with this hand. But I'm going to just keep it sloppy right now. Really sloppy. It's really bad. But that's okay. I'm just going to use that for now. A lot of times I'll do, do like this. I'll draw a little arrow just to remind myself. That sucks, Mike. Um, but I don't want to sit here and, and fight with it. I don't, you know, especially the way I'm feeling right now, it will just become a, a source of aggravation or it'll start to chip away at my confidence. So um, I'm just going to leave this ugly, floppy hand <laughs> and the this sort of non. Um, military marks here.
just so that I can keep moving. You know, momentum is really, really important. Um, I used to get hung up over certain shots. Pardon me. Um, hung up over certain shots or, um, yeah, just aggravate it over a hand or a face. And I just fight with it and fight with it. And what would happen is I just get deeper into some sort of psychological hole. Um, and it slowed the rest of the page down. Sometimes it would just basically bring everything to a halt. And what I started to notice was it wasn't until I returned to it like the next day that I was able to just immediately have a fresh perspective and it comes together like within the first five minutes of um, approaching the page the next day. And that's when I realized, oh, okay, okay. If I'm struggling with something, just move on. Just move on. You know, um, do the best you can at the moment. And, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, yeah, don't struggle. Don't struggle. Like, you're just going to aggravate yourself. So just do what you can at the moment and move on. These arms don't look right at all, but that's okay. Um, because it's all going to be blacked out. You won't be able to see this at all. And some of this just, again, impressions. You know, the buttons leave an impression of the shape of the chest. The name tag here just leaves an impression of, well, A, a name tag. It doesn't literally look like a name tag. But you can tell from the negative space there that that's where either his name or a little plaque of some kind goes. Um, and again, I don't know the military insignia stuff. I'm going to have to double check that. Um, I might not even get to do that here because it's going to take a little while for my dumb brain to figure out. Um, another fun trick. Old as time. You just flip the whole image. Well, here now I can see how much his body is off the center of his of himself. So he needs to have. Let's do this. Just do that. Oh no, that starts to look weird. Like I said, I, I'm just so fried right now. But I'll get through it. There we go. It's all a little sloppy. But I'll straighten it up. So I just kind of need this impression of his hands folded in front of him. I don't need the specifics to be there. Um, maybe I will in a bit. My brain is just, like I said, just completely fried right now. So uh, you just got to deal with what you can, you know. It's a very... Um, Force Gump moment here. And as stupid is, as stupid does kind of thing, you know? <laughs> like, just work with what you got, man. That's all I can do right now is just, just try and get through this. Because I said it would, I, I would hand it in tomorrow. So that means I got to work on it, even though I'm feeling like I am. Maybe it'll help if I make the brush a little smaller, lower stabilization so there's a little more play in his hand. And uh, you'll see in some of my other videos where I run into fuck me, I run into these situations. Um, sometimes the best recourse is to take your own photo reference. You know, I'll just kind of hold 
hold the notebook the way my character is and um, take a photo of that and just trace it out then I, I talk a lot about tracing and how to best use it like you never want to trace something especially if you were stylized you never want to trace something to look realistic you want to always kind of play with, with it so that it looks like you drew it not like you traced it um, even if you have a fairly realistic style where you might think that looking more real is going to help you um, even realistic stylized artists um, you can tell when something is traced as opposed to using photo reference they're just two different things um, I'm more articulate in my other videos and I talk about them quite a bit so you can look those up <laughs> All right, that's a more successful hand. While I'm here, let's let's look at this hand. I don't want him to look like he's touching himself, so I got to make sure that You know, what I'm doing here is just looking for the shapes. All this is going to be in black. But I'm still not sure if it looks like he's got a pee. <laughs> he's just supposed to be sort of, you know, relaxed, hold it, hold his hands folded. Again, I could do some photo reference for this. Um, Just not operating at a hundred percent, you know. So you just gotta, you just gotta, you just gotta work with it, though. That's all. You gotta work through. Some days you're sick, and you gotta work. You know, you know, comic book artists. You know, yeah, we get to work from home and stuff, but I also like to think about. You know, I have friends who, my son, he is a tow truck driver, and uh, there are days that he's sick as a dog, and he has to be out there on the road. And getting through it, it's got to work. My wife, she has uh, multiple sclerosis, and there are days where she can barely function, and she's at the table. You know, can hear physically grunting to get through lines and to get her work done. It's a physical exhaustion on her. And when I think about my wife, my son, and you know, friends who have regular nine to five jobs, and they just have to work through it you know there are days like this like okay i'm a comic book artist i live a soft life um but i'll draw inspiration from loved ones and friends and go you know just suck it up mike just suck it up you can get through this and draw power through um my friends and family experience <clears throat> so that's what i'm doing right now because uh, otherwise i'd just be sitting on a couch Alright, I'll get rid of that little arrow because I'm happier with this hand. Even though I kind of now I feel like the hand will just be blacked out pretty much. <laughs> yeah, so most of his hand is after all that struggling. It's it's all I end up with is I talk about this a lot, uh, shapes. I don't need any of the hand that I drew. I just needed the shapes. I just need the impression of a hand here. Um, I need the impression of the collar. Is that called collar? Is that uh, cufflinks? Not cufflinks. Uh, yeah, the collar or whatever this is around the wrist. <laughs> oh, my brain. <laughs> Just need the impression of these things. But that's also my style. You know, I'm not um, Adam Hughes or my other buddies who have a much more realistic style. But even then, they, they will they will lean into abstraction from time to time. Adam does a great thing where he uses a lot of negative space. It's, it's the things that he doesn't draw on a figure that makes it pop. Um, so even him being more realistic. Actually, I'd even argue that Adam isn't a realistic artist. You know, I think there's still a, a lot of cartoon 
a lot of abstraction to his work. Um, it might sound strange, but you know, I really do. And that's part of what makes his work so dynamic is that he's not stiffened up by um, being a slave to realism. Again, the impression of the pen here, you know, it's got like a cap with the little thing. You know, being this close in, it, that, that doesn't look like anything. In fact, let's get rid of some negative space there. That doesn't look like anything, but... I think I want to get rid of all of this. <clears throat> Pardon me. Oops. Not too much here. Speaking of negative space, this is a good opportunity to create some. So as I was saying with the pen cap, like it doesn't look too realistic, right? Not not close up like this, but the point is it doesn't need to. It just needs to create the impression of it. I don't like that that much. Um, I'm close here. Let's try this. Let's get rid of this. You know, even that kind of works, doesn't it? I'm not sure. It just looks a little claw-y. But I'm going to leave it right now. I'm going to leave it right now so I can come back to it with um, fresher eyes. As I okay, rotate, flip horizontal. I mean, it kind of looks like busted teeth or something. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just because I'm looking at it too hard. <clears throat> probably get rid of the outlines here too, like the exterior lines. The radar, let's get rid of some of these radar lines. I'm going to lower the opacity so it's <coughs> easy for me to see. <coughs> And if you're listening to me now and you're like, uh, oh, Mike, clearly you're sick. You should be just resting. Don't worry about this, blah, blah, blah. It's been over two weeks now. I've literally done nothing for two weeks. Sat on the couch and played a lot of Witcher 3. It's an old game, but what I love about Witcher 3 is its atmosphere, like, you should walk around that place and like the weather changes and it's just dynamic clouds and night with wind and I don't know, it feels like you're you're you are someplace. It really does take you away someplace and, and that's really fun. That's what I like about a game or a show. Just take take me away. So I wonder if I should take his everything else. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm still having trouble putting words together. So I'm going to.
crab inside of his eyes. Let's delete everything on the inside there and the radar. Let's delete that. Yeah. Yes, it's coming together. Very tangent here, though. Like it's almost like his his head is being clipped by the by the radar. Yeah, it's right there. So I'm gonna just make his hat taller, you know, or I could just move his whole body up. And let's see what that looks like, but it doesn't get too funky. Sometimes when you change proportions on things, it has effects elsewhere, and you're not sure. Like a domino effect, you know. And here it seems to work out. All right. Got to clean this up here. Clean that a little bit. All right, look at that. There you go. And I don't mind that this creates this triangle here. If I do, I'll just... Actually, I can... There you go. <clears throat> okay, so what do we got going on here? Let me let's get rid of that. Okay. Now I've got to find, I'm on my, uh, my secondary screen here, so you can't really see it. Uh, I need to find the blue tones that I use for Blue Book. Oh, crap. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> All I need to do is drag that in here. I double clicked it. So these are the two blue tones that I consistently use in Blue Book. And there's this lighter blue and a darker blue. And then I also allow myself to play around um, with other shades of blue. But the, these are these are the two blue base tones that I use. Um, and I think I want to have like a the darker blue in the background here. I'm not sure. Yeah, let's try the darker blue in the background. Let's see what happens. Let's see how it looks. There's a much smarter way for me to fill this in. I'm just trying to hold this. Oh, let's try now. <laughs> I'm just not thinking straight. Okay, let's shut that off. New layer. Let's reverse the selection. Just fill it in. Boom. Oh, look, it's Spider Man. It's just going to be all black. Oh, 
where they are. All right, so people want to make the guys are going to be. There we go. The light of blue. Oops. Practically glow. I love it. So I still got a lot of thinking to do, like... How exactly I'm going to do this. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to open up the lines here, the exterior lines on our Air Force dudes. And I'll have to like clean this up slightly, as you can tell. Wonder what I want to. I might want to do something with this radar and make this look just a much darker. Yeah, I'll keep it like that. All right, I think I'm not gonna. I thought I was gonna be able to finish this for you guys right here, but um, my energy from being sick is low. So. I'm going to finish out just these ink lines here that I'm going to knock out. And I'm going to put this on pause and we'll return to finish it up a little bit later. I can tell like, I'm just, I can't think. <laughs> but we'll get this done. It's also like a good reminder, I mean, being sick has been great to some extent, which has helped remind me that like, you know, not getting quote as much work done every day as possible. Um, I'll survive, you know, my head's not going to catch on fire. Well, it feels like it's on fire right now, but that's because of like sickness. Um, You know, it's okay to be slow sometimes. It's okay that the world gets in the way of art and creation and deadlines. Um, for comic book artists specifically, it's a thing because everything is deadline oriented and there's just not enough time in the day really to get done what you'd like to get done. I'm sure it's like that for a lot of people in different walks of life and different jobs. Um, for me, I realized when I started in comics, like started trying to get work in comics, I was constantly working and constantly hustling so that I could get pages done and get them to editors so that I can get feedback and hopefully get work. So it was this constant hustle and hurry up more pages, hurry up, get better, hurry up, work on this thing. Oh, this editor said they liked X, Y, and Z. Then you need to work on uh, this other thing, and you know, I'd hurry up and hustle and work on those, and improve, improve, improve. Um, 
and then suddenly you get some work and now it's like well now you got to hustle to impress the editor that you can meet a deadline um, now you got to hustle to keep this job to make your deadlines and you know what started out as this thought that oh this is a momentary hustle until I can quote make it um, it just never goes away and you end up working in like a state of constant panic of like I gotta get this done I gotta be faster I gotta get three pages done a day two pages done a day I used to be able to get two pages done a day and now it's only one and that's not enough and uh, it's hard to just get to a place where you can just go um, just do what you can do the best you can and, and not sweat it you know don't let it be a a mental game of panic like you're being chased by a ghost or something you know I've been chased by the ghost of my ambitions that's what it feels like all right so here we are with the spider-man cover evidently uh, it's going to look a little more like this in fact here I'll just very very quickly Slide all this black and here. Let's delete that. All right, it's looking better. Anyway, we're getting there. We're almost there. We're almost there. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna need to look at this while I'm not recording so that I can think of a really long time <laughs> and figure out what I'm doing with the radar thing with these layers. Does his alien head need to be more like it <clears throat> feels like the alien head needs to be more defined? I don't know. Anyway, almost there. Like, I really like the way this is coming out. Um, yeah, I gotta think about what I wanna do with this. I'll probably clean this up best I can. And um, make two versions of it based on one with this radar screen. Um, I think I try a different radar effect here as well. And then also just try one that's just hand drawn. And um, yeah, anyway, yeah, this is it's coming together. We're getting there, right? Okay, so. I will see you in part two where we finish this up and I find the right insignias and um, we play around with the zipatone and we wrap this up. Thanks for hanging out guys. Hope you didn't catch my COVID.